start. So since we have a three place trailer, we have to wrestle this, the snowmobile between these two. Here's a good shot. Here, wrestle this one between these two. And what I think the, the snowmobile trailer manufacturer should do is make it so you can put put the hooks right there so you can drive right back in. But put in the comments below how if you have a three foot snowmobile trailer how you guys get your snowmobiles wrestled in. Okay so one thing that we do is we put one of these little lock pins in to hold our ramp so that if we stop at like Walmart or something we don't get our ramp stolen because it's so easy to steal. You just pop two pins and take it out. So if we put this this lock pin in, it will prevent people from taking our ramps and ruining our trip.
We're going to change the spark plugs in the XLT today. We're going to pop the covers off. It's good to twist them a little bit just so you don't yank the boot loose and wreck one of the wires. And uh, you want to make sure you put the wires back on the same plugs. So I just kind of lay them in order like that. And you can go along and loosen all of them at the same time. And it's good to look at the plugs to kind of read them to see if they're getting too much gas or oil or whatnot. This one's looking at the little electrode there. It's nice and uh, brown, so that's good. I'm going to look at all three of them here. Because these cylinders were fogged in the fall, there could be extra oil in them. And I sometimes will pull it, o pull it over a couple times when I'm changing the plugs for the first time in the season once I have all the plugs out. That way you make sure you blow out any extra oil because you don't want to foul the new plugs right away. And this is an aluminum head so when you screw them in you want to be real careful. All three plugs look the same so that's a good sign. I'm going to lay these ones out of the way. And This might seem a little strange to pull this over with no plugs in it. It's the same with dirt bikes too if you follow them out on like two stroke motors. But it doesn't hurt to just give them a couple of holes. When you put something in storage, there can be extra oil in there. So it's good just to kind of make sure you get rid of it. The one thing you always want to do is check the plug number that's coming out. It says BR8ES. And then check the new one. It also says BR8ES. And that's hoping that the person that put these in last time checked and did them right. But when you go buy the plugs, you can ask the dealer also to verify that that's the right plug. I know these ones are correct. You just take those out of there. You really could check the gap on them. They come usually gapped correctly. So you want to screw them in by hand very carefully because this is aluminum and very easy to cross thread it. For those of them that don't know what is the gap on the spark plug? Uh, usually it's like 30 thousandths, I think. How um, do you check it? Should we, uh, should, I do have a gap checker I could show them. Let's see here. The gap is the distance from this uh, piece right there in the electrode. And I kind of just know that it looks about right. But I do have a tool to check it, which is a, actually a good idea, but I'm not doing it today. <laughs> so I put them all in, I put them all in hand tight to start. Um, and then we'll go on along and snug them up with the wrench. There's a gasket that's in there so you can kind of get right down to the Get them hand tight, and then we'll go along with this piece. They call it a scrunch because it's like a socket wrench. And I just kind of give them a little bit just to snug it up and crush that gasket a little bit. Because you don't want them blowing out of the motor either when you're running it. And you don't want to be way out on the end of the wrench because, again, these are aluminum. Just You're kind of just going just enough to get them in there snug. I've seen people destroy the heads and then what happens is you have to unbolt the head and bring that in and get it retapped, um, which is a major problem. <laughs> That's good. This one needs a little more. Okay. And then you can go along and put the wires back on put them on straight and they should just snap on there this one didn't click quite right okay they're all good now all right and that's how you change the plugs
Now Murray's gonna repeat that process on his snowmobile, and then I'm gonna do it on this snowmobile. For those who don't know, there are 10 grease jerks on these snowmobiles. One, two, two on each ski, and then there's four under here on each pivot point. Each pivot point, one up there, one right there, one down here, down here somewhere, and then there's one way, uh, I don't know if you can see that up there. And then there's two more. One, one right here, right there, and then there's one on focus, right, right there, if it focuses. The thing that we carry in our snowmobiles, it's like a tow rope for if you get a snowmobile stuck in the ditch. This gets hooked to the back bumper, and then these two hooks go to the skis on the front of the snowmobile. We're gonna go out on the trail, and I, since I don't have a GoPro, I'm just filming on the phone. We'll probably not get a lot of shots of us riding, but I'll try and get some. The smoke detector went off because all of the exhaust was going. 